Hello. Hi. Hello, everybody. My name is Diana Cordova, and I am the uh, Director of Multicultural Affairs. I want to welcome everybody. Um, we're very excited to be able to do this virtual event, uh, the first event for Multicultural Affairs at Eastern. Um, I also want to let you know that since this is our first event, we may have, if we have any issues, please be patient with us. But I would love to introduce you um, the team for Multicultural Affairs. And I'd like to introduce you, Kata. Hello, everyone. My name is Catalina Arena Mendoza. I am the graduate coordinator for the Department of Multicultural Affairs, the graduate assistant, so the GA, if you hear that um, paraphrase. And I am getting my master's in communications and graduated from here from Eastern in May. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Annabelle Haudegui and I'm the administrative assistant for the department. And I'm also a graduate student here on campus in the counseling program. And so be really quick before I introduce our speaker tonight, I would like to cover a few housekeeping rules. This is our first webinar of the semester. And the way a webinar works is that you can hear, you can see and hear our speaker, but you can't necessarily interact or ask questions throughout the presentation yet. However, you can always communicate via chat. And also at the end, there will be a Q&A in where I will grant you all access so that you can talk and ask questions and interact directly. So, who's ready? You're actually, you're in for a really great treat tonight as you enjoy poetry with internationally acclaimed poet and vocalist Gina Loring. She has performed her poetry and music in over 10 countries as guest artist of the American Embassy. She was commissioned to write poems honoring Quincy Jones and Prince. She has also been featured on HBO's Deaf Poetry. Her voice, words, and passion will speak to your heart and uplift your spirit. Check her out at GinaLoring.com or on Instagram at Gina Starlight and on Twitter at the Gina Loring. As she is performing, keep in mind that she will also be conducting a transformative poetry workshop happening on September 23rd via Zoom at 2 p.m. If you have any questions, ideas, feel free to bring it up at the Q&A in the end. We hope you enjoy her presentation. And so now, Gina, do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, good evening. Can you all hear me? Yes? Can I get a thumbs up or just kind of let me know? All is well? You can hear me? Okay, let me know. Yes, great sound. Okay, good, thank you. So please let me know in the chat if, if anything cuts out, if for some reason you can't hear me or if there's any issue, just let me know and I'll kind of be keeping my eye on that. Uh, so wonderful to, to be here with you all. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm going to open with a prayer that I wrote. So this is prayer and then I'll go into uh, Hey, not been good. I ask the Lord. Hey, I been your Asked the Lord, and he said to me, Baby, be still. Let life unfold as it will. My love is here for you. Walk with you always. May your nights and your days hear me and be brave. Be brave. You move me. Like 14 years old, the autobiography of Malcolm X changed my life since age 19. You will be like a long, cool drink of water after the steepest hike on the hottest day, like Lena Horne's grace and Alice Walker's words and Billie Holiday's life. Like, like the time I met Mr. T. 
flinging myself into his arms like a little girl at 22. Overcome with an emotion I did not realize I had. You see, we of the fatherless tribe love men differently. Like I love Mr. T, Sherman Hemsley, John Amos, and Arsenio. Yes, Arsenio, because they were constants for at least a period of time present in my home, in my living room, in my adolescence as no other men were, so I love them. Mr. T, that is how you move me like humility, lessons, joy, grief, daydreams, truth, because I am a Leo. So I walk with my head high and act like I'm cool, but really, I am scared. And you are the constellation that guides me home, the star that lights my path. You remind me of love and hope and action and dignity. Like Muhammad Ali, we will stand for something, and I am sensitive and not a morning person. And nitpicky about lint. And sometimes too emotional, and other times not emotional enough because my youth was bruised, and you massage me back to life with your rhythm, your words, your spirit. You move me like wind, like five years old. Rabbi Neil strums the guitar, familiar. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your might. I pretend to read from the prayer book. I can't really read yet, but I pray real. Like 20 years old, meeting my brother for the first time. My smile on his face, my eyes looking into my eyes and so much pain behind both our eyes that I had to look away. You move me like the Olympics. Rayford Johnson was my hero and every man in my life will forever be compared to him because he used to put me on his shoulders and I was special if only every now and then. You move me like Native American prayer songs, like graffiti under freeways and jeans that fit perfectly, like hip hop, like Ella Fitzgerald scats amazing as your blues up and down and slipping sideways, harmonizing, harmonizing honey hymns. You move me like sunshine, like like you, Fred Hampton, speaks truth, stands solid, thunder in the sky, rock the world, shock them, shake them, make them see without a doubt, you most definitely move me. And the crowd goes wild. Thank you. So right now is obviously a very interesting chapter of history. Uh, there's a lot going on politically, a lot going on in the world. Um, it's very stressful, especially for communities of color. Um, so this piece uh, really just speaks to the idea that uh, the revolution starts within. The revolution is within us. Um, so I'm going to sing a few lines from a song by Sweet Honey and the Rock and then go into a poem. We who believe in freedom cannot we who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. The revolution is a single mother. Three kids, two jobs, one prayer. It is Sojourner Truth, Joan of Arc, and Frida Kahlo meeting clandestine by candlelight. Betty Shabazz, Merle Evers, Coretta Scott King, up sleepless nights. It is labor. The revolution is the Lakota Sioux woman at Standing Rock nursing her baby. She is speaking to God. The rhythm of breath on her skin, akin to patchwork prayers, Louisiana blues. We release you from our bodies, trusting the moon to watch over you. It is Trayvon Martin walking home in the rain. Eric Garner's final breath. Emmett Till, Mike Brown. It is the sound of a thousand broken hearts, more than one poem could ever hold. Parents burying their babies is unnatural, ungodly, like bigotry, like bullets. The revolution is every grandmother, sister, daughter who held you before you even took form, rocked you in our arms before you could speak or walk or write. But the world will not magically change overnight. No one will right these wrongs for you. No one can make your feet dance or march or move. This is not a movie. 
There will be no paparazzi, red carpet, no entourage, no groupies. There is no room for Hollywood idolatry in a conversation about freedom. We must not be distracted by complacency, pop culture, trickery. The revolution is not a mainstream consumer-based funded event, not sponsored by Nike or Nokia, not a reality show. It is reality. Where Kardashian is a household name, but Mumia Abu Jamal is not. Where an afternoon of Botox costs enough to feed a dozen homeless families. Where men in power are not held accountable for unspeakable behavior. Where women are demonized for telling the truth. Where money buys silence, buys loyalty, buys bodies, where every black male is a suspect and every cop has impunity, where communities live in a chronic state of loss. This is a world where the prison industrial complex legally enslaves black and brown, where children wake up in war zones, poor people killing poor people. Poor people kill the poor people, 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 look up. Death lullabies rattle the heavens. Be witness. The revolution will not be featured on Sunset Boulevard billboards or a sponsored post on your Instagram feed. The revolution is action, is each shot fired, each bomb shattering the sky open. It is daring to live anyway. Look the demon in the eye and suck a punch that motherfucker with a poem. Because the revolution will not wait, not come at your convenience. There is no rewinding, no fast forwarding, no time traveling. There is only now. There is only now. There is only now. The revolution is here. The revolution is 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 now. The revolution is you. All right. Thank you. So I'm just going to check the chat and make sure you guys can all hear me, hear me well. Okay, beautiful. You guys, you guys are putting in some nice comments. Thank you. Much love. Much love. So uh, before I go into this next poem, I just want to take a moment. You know, as I mentioned, this is a really stressful time. Um, there's a lot of communal trauma, communal stress right now. And so I just want to ask everybody from where you are at home, just take a minute and place your hands Place your hand on your heart just to kind of center yourself. So let's just do this together really quickly. Just take a minute with your hands on your heart, close your eyes. And we're just gonna take three deep breaths together and then I'm gonna go into a piece um, that's kind of about this, you know, just kind of centering yourself, anchoring yourself and remembering your own power. So take a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. Take another one in through your nose, out through your mouth. One more, nice and deep. Just sit in that stillness for a minute, feeling your own heartbeat, remembering your own heartbeat. With all due respect to the ancestors, I have decided to uncloak myself of heritage and be made of spun light. I will be a river, flowing in the four directions, every spirit beckoning me to remember, I am not this body. Grown from a line of sharecroppers, trail of tears walkers, chitlin circuit showstoppers, concentration camp survivors, witness to and performance of miracles, sea party prophets, burning bushes, levitating meditators, Paramahansa, Yogananda, Harriet Tubman, Dalai Lama without planetary confinement, race, doctrine, alignment, gender, color, class, assignment, I resign. Turn in my papers. My freedom needs no proof or validation. I am whole right here, right now. Say it with me. I am whole right here, right now. I am whole right here, right now. I am whole right here, right now. This, my mantra, this, my song. When asked my ethnicity and gender on applications and paperwork, I will attach this poem with a note saying, please see attached poem. I am a river. There's no box for that. All right. 
See how I did that? Little, little word play there. There's no box for a river, right? Because the river flows. So you can't put a river in a box, but also there's no box to check off. But I'm a river. I don't, I don't identify with any of these other things you have here for me to check off. I'm a river. Okay? I stay flowing. Okay. So this piece is called Walking Prayers, and it just really speaks to the divine feminine, the divine feminine from whom uh, we all come. Everybody came from a woman. And so this is just a, taking a moment to honor, um, honor that, that divine feminine. We are walking prayers. Angels leave love letters in our palms. Our hands speak scripture. We are life givers meant for sacred work. We build bodies in our bodies. Babies born of our daydreams who will one day tell our stories. We tend to them in back seats and bathroom stalls, lullabies and love hymns. We pray over them. May they be safe, may they be strong. May they be safe, may they be strong. This is our song. Our mother, sister, daughter, woman, warrior song. We wear wounded hearts like badges of courage, carrying the weight of the world on each shoulder, collecting lessons and battle scars. We are peace trees. Our hips, the framework for families, the foundation where God's magic takes tangible form. Future generations depend on the resilience of our bodies. And what would we tell them? When boys only tree houses grow up to be boys only governments, boys. Boys who have forgotten their first home was their mother's womb. Took their first breath, their first breath, in the embrace of her arms. We must remind them, from our breast you were fed. We are shelter, we are vessel, our wounds are holy ground. So violating a woman is a violation against God, a sin against yourself, karmic suicide. We are sacred geometry, divine pyramids and astrology, not to be thrown away like pearls to swine, meant to be honored, not objectified. We were not always swayed by billboards beckoning from boulevard rooftops, Photoshop glam shots, nightclubs and hot spots, skylines laced with man-made messages, morphing our self-images into worked anorexic fantasies, a gender bias consumer agenda has us roaming for days. Eyebrows threaded, makeup applied, hair done, leg shaved, bikini wax, push up bra, high heels intact, and we will never get those hours back. Our reflection is not in red carpet mainstream movie stars. It is in the night sky, the moon's soft mirror glow somewhere just past Mars. Women are the heartbeat of the world. We are regal. We are legacy. Mary brought Jesus through. Yahabed brought Moses through. Amina brought Muhammad through. Isis brought Horus through. Harriet Tubman brought hundreds through. We are warriors. Our love is infinite. Our voices are made of light. Our hearts are harbor, our song far and long. We are every continent, every smoke signal and song, every prayer, every element, day and night. We are earth, air, water, sunlight. Let us celebrate ourselves. Be our own heroes. Rewrite the fairy tale so Sleeping Beauty wakes her own damn self up, slays the dragon, looks at herself in the mirror and says, Princess, I found you. Woo yeah. Her heart beats in realms you cannot see. These fleshy, fragile suits are but vessels. You can't box up the sun or hold the Milky Way hostage. Can't capture the wind, chain something as elusive as sound. Her name is written in the ridges of your palm, hidden beneath your first waking breath. She is in the sky, in sunsets, golden violets and blues, in the clouds, in the waves. Her name is written there too. 
her womb, the cradle of civilization. Akashic records trace it back. Everyone is black. Do not hear the wind testify. We made you possible. What have you become? What have you done? Strayed so far from your own humanity, you can't see ours. What God do you pray to? What laws do you live by? Are you not ashamed to breathe, having stolen so much breath, karmic debt, almost beyond repair? Who dares such barbarity? Violence as generational practice, as tradition, such sins are cancerous to the collective soul and we are all connected to the whole. You violate the most sacred carriers of light, divine feminine. We are the moon, we are life. What upside down world did you create to take the sanctity of our bodies and make it a thing? the blessing of our skin and make it wrong when all along we are built by divine design. You are haunted by your own doing. Some sick sibling rivalry. You hate us, but want to be us. No booty lift, lip injection, tanning salon can give you soul. No redemption, no ascension can be bought with silver or gold. Just say her name. The constellation spell it out. Say her name. It's your passport to freedom, your only route. Repent, confess, stole our bodies, our culture, the shoulders we stand on. But the ancestor spirits are not for sale. Our regality and resilience are not for your taking. Every peak and valley, her name is shaking. It echoes out from that core she is both after and before. The very earth you walk on. The air in your lungs, the rhythm of your breath, say her name. It's all that will be left when you are called to judgment, stripped to ash and bone. Say her name. That's your only way home. So that poem, um, that poem was called Say Her Name. So there's a campaign uh, called, called Say Her Name, hashtag Say Her Name that is under the African American Policy Forum. And essentially it was created um, to call attention to the fact that there are many black women. And I would also add to that um, Latino women and indigenous uh, First Nations women as well, who are um, violated, who are murdered. And uh, we often don't hear about them. We often don't hear their names. Uh, we, do, we do hear about the men far more than we do about the women. Um, but it is definitely a problem for both. So that poem, Say Her Name, is really just a reminder that, you know, again, we all come from the divine feminine and the, the violation, the, the lack of respect for life um, that we are all witnessing is just, it's astounding. It really is astounding. Um, and so that, that poem was an honor to write. I was commissioned by, um, by the Say Her Name campaign by the African American Policy Forum, and they're going to be putting out a video um, as well as uh, several other artists contributing their, their work as well, uh, coming up, I believe, in a week. So uh, if you follow me on social media, uh, I'll be posting about it when that's available and you can check it out. Um, so speaking of strong women, since we're on that topic, uh, so someone who I think about when I think about a strong woman, like in contemporary times, I and mean, obviously there are many, many throughout history, uh, from Ida B. Wells to Fannie Lou Hamer to Frida Kahlo, uh, women who have inspired many of us, Zornia Hurston. Um, but in terms of contemporary women, Tina Turner always stands out to me as someone who really walked through the fire. So uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with her story, but for those who aren't, Tina Turner, uh, who was born Anna May. So Anna May was her name growing up and who she was as a young woman. Um, and she was married to Ike Turner, who was extremely uh, abusive and violent during the course of their marriage. And when she finally was able to leave that marriage um, uh, and leave that part of her life and, and that, that initial part of her career, she went on and became a huge rock star in her own right without him. Um, moved to Europe, got her a younger man, made all kinds of money, traveled the world, really kind of like, you know, won the war in the end. She ended up the victor, for sure. Uh, she left this, this horrible um, situation and really came out swinging, came out as the queen. So I got to thinking about somebody like that who lives many lives within the course of one life I mean, and who uh, lives through many things. And I thought, well, I wonder what Tina, 
the, the, the later version of her would say to Anna May, the younger version of her. And I thought about how we, as human beings, we all kind of have our past, our present, and the future all within ourselves. You know, they talk about the inner child, uh, and then we have our present selves, and then we have our inner elder, you know, our higher self that always kind of you know, has wisdom and knows better, our intuition. So all of these parts of ourselves that are coexisting simultaneously. And so I wanted to kind of try to capture that into a poem um, in, in terms of Tina, Tina Turner and what she might say to her younger self. So this is Tina to Anna Mae. One day, you will get up off the floor, unbow your head, and birds will fly from your throat. Your voice will carry rivers and rain dances. You will be a windstorm on fire. Magic lives in your lungs, the heart of a warrior. And may, there are wings beneath your shoulder blades. Liberation in flight. Your dancing will conjure miracles, a volcano of light. You are the wound that heals, smooth and steady. Legs strong, muscles moving like moonshine, memory across midnight and May. You are midnight, but then again, you are the dawn. Stretch yourself across a thousand skies. Look yourself in the eye. You are the victory song singing out from every woman's chest, God's best. Those demons were never yours to hold. They weren't even his. They belonged to his great granddaddy who came up beaten in the fields, each lash a monster on his back one by one, watched his family sold off one by one, each prayer unanswered one by one, to get bitterness and betrayal, fury and rage, a unique inheritance of violence, poison passed down, powerless in the world, the tyrant in these here four walls. Woman, you do what I say, I own you and I'm a man. Every time he parroted the oppressor, it was his own pain. Every time a knuckle chiseled a cheekbone, each reckless curse spun across the room, spit flying like wildfire from a venomous tongue, ego unspun, salvation undone. But when he shattered your ribcage, it healed into a sanctuary. And a man, you will alchemize yourself into a phoenix, walk through hell and come out swinging, each battle scar spelling out freedom. You will perform on stages in every city, on every continent, a powerhouse, fierce and unafraid. You are grit and gold, a skyscraper touching the sun. What's love got to do with it when you are the sun? Superstar comic, come closer, anime. One day, this will all be a story. You win the war, you save yourself, the hero in the end. And you win. Woo! I was feeling that one. Okay. I'm just looking at the chat, making sure y'all can still hear me. Everything's good. All right. Beautiful. Okay, so. I'm gonna sing a little bit a love song that I wrote. Thank you, thank you. I see folks putting applause in the chat box. Thank you, I receive it. I receive it and send the love right on back. Okay, so I'm gonna sing, this is called Simple and Plain. So this song, um, I actually just finished uh, recording, working on it, and was very fortunate to have a, a friend of mine who is a a uh, very talented MC, uh, Bless Me, with a, um, a verse on it. So that'll be coming out soon. So again, if you follow me on, uh, on, the, on the interwebs, on the social media platforms, um, then I'll be sure to post about it when I release the song. But pretty soon, pretty soon. I would say Simple and Plain will be out within the next few weeks. So I'm going to share that piece, and then I'll go into a love poem. So we'll kind of we'll kind of uh, dim the lights, change the mood a little bit. So wherever you are, kind of like lean into that romantic, heartfelt place within you. If you're with, if you're with your, your loved one, go ahead and take their hand. Let them know you love them. This is a moment for that. Wish I knew the way to your heart. Wish I knew the words to 
space where some kind of magic is being born in realms we cannot remember before time or breath or bodies shooting stars reroute their flights to watch us make love the earth shifts trees dance right out of their roots to be witness our love is a meteor shower sweeping across the darkest pitch perfect sky Curtis Mayfield falsetto over a breakbeat symphony testimony. We speak in the vibration of midnight stars spelling out sacred scripture. Our love is divine alignment, scrolled secretly in cloud formations and waterfall rhythms. Listen, take off my skin. Release all that has ever been. Quiet the wind wrestling outside, the worries who wanna wander back in. No to-do list, no traffic, no static, the world is still. This heart has been reborn, opened, unraveled as sky. Let me inhale the galaxy behind your eyes. Stretch me out wide, empty my rib cage. Release every moment I have ever lived. The high notes and low rumbles, the mountains of want. You have seen me. And I have seen you. I know the hidden parts, the child, the adult, the elder. My love is not compartmental. I see you whole. From the angles of the angels who rejoice at their handiwork, waited patiently for us to find each other, stopped in our own tracks, the paths they cross long before we are ever conscious of the connection, with the graffiti hieroglyphics hovering above our heads, written long before our births or burdens, every day searching for somewhere to hang our hats, wash our weary bones, pretend we've never known pain. Because this life ain't easy. There are memories to shake and bills to pay, the surrender of survival, dealing with day to day, but together our cups overflow. This is what I know. So hug me long, breathe me in, 
Let me hold your every burden and give you all of mine. Let time be healed and no more in this refuge of sin. Our love, a safe haven, even our flaws are on purpose. We are a sky stretching itself into another dimension, somewhere beyond sunsets where there is no need for sound. We speak in color, bright blues, glowing violets, melting into one solid strength, one sacred sanctified sonnet. We are poetry. And the vagabond wind hums a harmony of home. Love each other flawed, love each other broken. Love each other flawed, love each other broken. We will tuck this mantra under our tongues for safekeeping when all of our childhood daydreams come knocking on the window pane, gathered like huddled masses seeking shelter from the storm. Our love is a warm bath and cooked food. Lullabies and love hymns, Coltrane, Ellington, Aretha, Marvin Gaye, laughter and play, slow dancing in the living room, hands held, breath in unison, bodies pressed tight. Our love is a prayer whispered into the night, the rhythm and the ridges of our palms, the roadmap song we cannot seem to forget. Our love is the silence underneath. Our love is a river of stars unleashed. All right. In tears for real over here. Aww, y'all, good. Y'all feeling the emotion? Because I'm feeling the emotion. It, it's been an emotional week. It's been an emotional month. It's been an emotional year. We got to let it out. All right, so I just have a couple of more pieces to share. And then I would love to be in conversation with you. So if you have any questions um, about writing or about anything that you've heard, any of the topics that I've talked about, any comments or questions, I would love to be able to uh, dialogue with you guys a little bit um, afterwards. So maybe jot it down if, you, if something comes to mind and that way we can talk afterwards. Um, okay, so this piece is called The Last Word. You know, they say, talking about love, that our first loves are our parents or our grandparents who ever raised us, um, that usually uh, we are in love you know, with our father, with our mother. Um, they represent our, our first close intimate relationship. Um, so for me, I didn't grow up with my father. I met him later in life. And I had a very unique experience because uh, I met him when I was 20 and he was in the beginning stages of Alzheimer's. So I was able to spend the last few years of his life uh, on a journey of love and forgiveness and um, being present for him, you know, in his, in his most uh, vulnerable kind of sacred time right before he made his transition. Um, and it was truly a blessing. It was truly life-changing. And so this poem just speaks to that experience of being a fatherless girl child, uh, but a woman who very much had a father and an experience uh, that, that was transformative with him. The day my father made his transition, I knew. Love knows no logic. When I got the call that he was gone, my first thought was, I wonder if his body is still warm. If I could get there fast enough to touch him one last time, hold his hands that look so much like mine. How much love can live in a heart hollowed by abandonment? Love. For a man who provided little more than DNA and a host of issues I'm still working through, let me tell you. With this heavy head, it's hard to be still sometimes. But that's when God comes in clear. Like sitting at my father's hospital bedside, finding that forgiveness is the best remedy for pain and the only choice the angels smile upon. But the past is tough to shake free. No one ever taught me I was worth loving. No man hands ever bandaged these scraped knees, which became callous, a tough exterior woman shell. I'm grown now. But still, the seven-year-old girl, sad beyond consolation at her own birthday party, cake and presents, but no gift she unwrapped was a father. Children who, grow, children who come up in single parents' homes grow up faster. 
learn early. The tooth fairy sometimes forgets to come because she's working two jobs, it's her carpool day, and the jury's still out on whether or not she'll sleep alone for the rest of her life. Sometimes there's no one to cheer you on at the talent show or volunteer at your school's PTA because that's usually when parents tag team. But single is a lonely word and a team takes at least two, like family, like summer birthdays and barbecues. We learn grown-up words like rent and bounce checks and not now. We bear the brunt of a stressed out single parent in the form of get out of my face, get out of my space, I'm done, you're on your own, we get creative. In fifth grade, I told my class my dad was a Jamaican spy, which was why no one ever saw him. His absence was strictly a business thing, like some FBI secret service shit. In high school, I wrote an angry letter I never mailed. Dear sperm donor, I don't need you and your trifling, irresponsible, selfish ass anyway. If a man's worth is weighed by how well he cares for his family, you are on your way down a long and lonely highway of fiery pits of hell. Sincerely, your bitter offspring, a.k.a. the condomless knight. I admit, I have some issues. But that's because the one man on the planet who was supposed to cherish me didn't. But I was given the opportunity to love him anyway. I fed him soup and sang to him. And when he didn't remember his own name, I whispered it in his ear. And when he cried, I comforted him. And when he slept, I prayed for him to go to God with grace, if not dignity. We are all somebody's baby, even when we are born into burden. I loved him as if I hadn't met him at 20, as if the gaping hole in my life story had shifted its shape and become a gift, as if by doing right by him, I could somehow rewrite our story is simple. Love and love equals love, however you spin it. So I will take the love I gave to him and wrap it around myself until that seven-year-old girl within me smiles. I'm gonna give her the moon and the motherfucking stars. Of course, she would become a poet. Everybody knows poets get the last word. Okay. So I have one more poem that I'm going to share. Um, and then after that, we can kind of open the forum and, and you guys are more than welcome to ask any questions or if you want an encore, we can do another piece. Um, so this is Somewhere There Is a Poem. Somewhere There Is a Poem. Somewhere coiled around my love but somber like the breeze on a cloudy day on the edge of sound. Within the crevice between rationale and emotion, huddled beneath the sound of laughter is a poem. I want to write this poem. I want to speak this poem. I want to feel this poem. I want to experience this poem. Cradle it in my arms, feed it a good meal, and send it on its merry way. I want to sing this poem. Amazing. Somewhere there's the poem screaming, get up, stand up. Stand up for your rights, human beings, human beings, human beings, beings, being so caught up in the tangible material surface or they never actually feel. Their touch is liquid and grazes right through but misses the core. This poem whispers to me and rocks me to sleep and tells me stories of indigenous people diseased and tricked and slaughtered and made to be extinct. But this ain't no pterodactyl or Tyrannosaurus Rex blood flowing through my veins. I am a Creek American Indian. I exist. I am an African, 
I am an old Jewish woman muttering prayers in Yiddish as my name is the place with a number on my arm. I'm a little Japanese girl staring in horror as my village is bombed and burnt to the ground. I was born in India, but not to the right castle. Regardless of what I accomplish, I will always be a peasant. I died in Mexico three feet from the border, gunned down by evil troops who shoot for a living, who sacrifice their souls for the man-made boundaries of these Americas somewhere. There is a poem somewhere dozing in subway stations and flying high on the 405 and taking the L to Brooklyn and the 15 to Vegas and the martyr through Atlanta and cruising down the dark street of Oakland. There's a poem. This poem comes from somewhere deep, somewhere where the angels sleep, where pixies dance and mermaids weep, where hymns are hummed so God will keep us all in mind on Judgment Day. This poem warns but does not sway. But what you do is up to you, where you go and who you know, if you close up or if you grow. Somewhere there is a poem about the insanity, the derangement, the audacity, the utter barbarity of war, Hiroshima, Hiroshima, hero, hero, war, hero, 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 heroin is, crack cocaine is, the systematic genocide of my people. Brown skin behind bars, locked up behind bars, trapped behind bars, enslaved behind bars, kept in line behind bars, counted behind bars, bars, there are more bars. Selling alcohol on a single reservation in Oklahoma, then in all of Ventura County, County, County me in, because I'm down for the revolution, which may not be televised and may not get radio play, but it will be told through poetry, because somewhere there is a poem. This poem speaks to me and draws me in like an amusement park to a kid. I want to freak this poem and dream this poem and share it with y'all. Hold up. Shh. I just did. All right. Thank you guys so much. So Annabelle, if you want to um, to open the forum up, I would love to, to dialogue a little bit if there's any questions or comments. I'm more than happy to do that. Um, Gina, I think on our side here, our heart is racing so hard. I don't know, you feel it. You know, we feel like the monitor is just shaking. This was amazing. Thank oh, you. I'm serious. My heart. Oh, wow. Um, uh, I really, I almost want to cry. So um, we would like to open the forum for anybody. Please raise your hand and we will allow you to ask her any questions. Thank you. My pleasure. You know, I, I really do believe that poetry is medicine. Yes. So how do uh, like how do you get inspired? Like, what what do you do? Do you have a routine? Do you just go out in the country, or like just sitting down it hits you, or how 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 does that happen? So, um, in my experience, I think that a lot of times creativity it's a very natural kind of organic thing that happens. Um, I try not to force it or overthink it. Um, oftentimes poems will come at the most random times. I'll get an idea when I'm driving somewhere, when I'm walking my dog, when I'm in the shower, maybe I have a dream and I wake up in the morning and kind of like, you know, connect the dots. Um, it's really kind of like a spiritual experience. I feel like, um, you know, like in indigenous, in First Nations tradition, uh, there's a lot of emphasis on dream time. And I feel like I get a lot of influence that way in dream time, just kind of like, almost like, I become a vessel, you know, where I don't even feel that it's right for me to take full credit because I feel like I'm being given the words. I'm being told this is what the poem needs to be for people to hear. This is how the song goes. It, it very much flows through almost like I'm just uh, an interpreter and I'm like remembering it. Like, oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's the next line. Now, now what comes next? Oh yeah, okay, that's, that, that's what comes next. It's almost like I'm working with, uh, with the creator. I'm working with, you know, divine powers. So um, that's, that's kind of my, uh, my experience with it. If I'm given an assignment, like if somebody asks me to write about a specific thing, then of course I kind of like sit with it and, you know, think what, what, what I want to say, what's my opinion. Um, it, it is very empowering, especially with so many things happening in the world. Um, 
I feel, and I'm sure I speak for many others too, like kind of disempowered, you know, when you see just all of these traumatic things happening. I personally am just one woman. I can't go out and save the world and, you know, end violence. Um, but I can write a poem and I can tell you how I feel about it. You know, so there's something kind of powerful about that, you know, that my voice, my words, my opinions belong to me and nobody can control that. Um, so I don't really have a specific thing I do. I just kind of try to be open and let it flow. Thank you. Absolutely. So, I'm here. so uh, let's see, there's some questions in the, in the chat. Should I read them or Annabelle, do you want to do that? Or well, I actually, I gave them permission to talk. So if they wanted to ask you directly, I know Gloria had her hand up. So I, I gave her access of two, I believe. Do you? Oh, yeah. I'm Gloria? here. Okay. Yes, I'm here. I would like to know, I love all your poems. They're, they're just so beautiful. You made me cry. Um, at what point in your life you knew or you realized I'm a poet? And uh, what were the, you know, the background, what, how did you get to that point? I started writing poetry when I was 14. So um, I was in boarding school. I was very unhappy. Um, I'm sure you guys can all remember 14, 15 years old. That's a weird time of life. You're not really grown yet, but you're not really a kid anymore, but you're, you're kind of in this strange in-between space where you're trying to figure out who you are. Um, and, um, and you know, my father was out of the picture. My mother was struggling with some things and wasn't able to continue raising me at that time. So uh, I ended up, you know, being in, in this boarding school environment, um, kind of on my own, you know, just figuring things out without any kind of family. And, um, and writing really became my saving grace. And when I started writing in my journal, I, I was just so depressed and unhappy. And it was a place for me to put my emotions, you know, it was a healthy way for me to channel out you know, and feel like, you know, kind of, kind of speaking to the point I made before where it's like I, I felt powerless. I can't change my circumstances. I can't change the world just in one day, but I can write down how I feel. And there's something about getting it out of you, writing it down, speaking, at, speaking it out loud. It's empowering. So when I was a teenager, uh, writing definitely became like my therapy. You know, it was very cathartic. And then I started reading at open mics um, when I, a little bit when I was in college and then when I got, when I graduated um, from college. That's when I really started getting into reading. Um, and honestly, I never set out to be a poet. I always wanted to be a singer. So poetry was just kind of something I did for myself. But when I started going to open mics and reading, you know, from my journals, just reading stuff that came out very naturally for me and seeing how people, it resonated with people and the responses I started to get, um, that's when I kind of said, oh, I guess I'm a poet. I guess I'm a poet because people are feeling it and, you know, asking me to perform and it just kind of snowballed from there. So it wasn't really something I set out to do. It was something that I think um, I was led to do. Um, yeah. Thank you. So I see some other questions. Can you share your social media information? Yes. So it's in the chat. So my Instagram is at Gina Starlight, G-I-N-A-S-T-A-R-L-I-G-H-T. So Instagram is at Gina Starlight. I'm most active on IG. Um, on Twitter, I'm at the Gina Lauren. So at T-H-E-G-I-N-A-L-O-R-I-N-G. Um, and if you uh, want to just go to my website, all the links are there as well. So if you just go to GinaLauren.com, um, you can follow me from there as well for the different social media handles. Okay, someone said, do you do a lot of editing after the initial wave of inspiration? That's a really good question. Um, I would say yes. I would say that initial first flow, you know, as I said, I try to just let it flow, be a vessel, um, stay out of my own way, don't overthink it. Um, and then once I have the, the body of the piece, like the heartbeat of it is there, uh, then yes, usually I'll leave it alone for a day or two so I can kind of just take a break from it. And then I'll return to it with fresh eyes. And usually, yeah, I'll edit it a little bit to kind of make sure maybe certain lines need to go in, different, in a different order. Um, or if I notice a certain rhythmic pattern that might be cool, like, oh, I should put this here, that kind of rhymes. And, you know, kind of, I have a, I, I used to rap, so I also kind of have a little bit of a, like a, an MC mindset where I wanted to kind of almost like puzzle pieces, I wanted to fit right. 
So I will go back and kind of be like, oh, this part would be better over here or, you know, just kind of like mapping it out. Um, but I definitely try to let that initial first flow just be organic, just be what it is, and then go back later um, to edit it. So your poems tonight, are they something you have lived through? Yes, everything that I shared with you tonight is all autobiographical. Uh, yeah, I've been through some shit. So at least, at least I can get it out in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's, it, all of my poetry is straight from my lived experience, you know, my own personal journey um, and also my, my opinions and, and experiences um, of what I see happening in the world, you know, so it's a combination of universal issues, issues of humanity, issues of sexism, of racism, of the things that are, you know, that affect all of us, um, but then also my personal lived experience as a woman of color, as, a, as, a, as I said, you know, growing up without my father, um, you know, things that have been significant and personal for my journey. Okay, how did you become so empowered after all the trauma that has happened? Uh, you know, I think it's a continuous, it's a continuous journey. So, you know, I, I, I would, by no means would I say like, I have arrived, I'm, I'm perfectly healed and happy now. You know, I think that it's kind of like your whole life, you're processing and healing your life, you know? Um, that's why it's like so important to give kids a happy childhood because then they're gonna spend their adulthood, you know, you know they say you spend your adulthood getting over your childhood. Um, so I, I wouldn't say that I'm done. You know, I think that it's an ongoing process, but I do think that being creative and allowing myself the space to get it out has been very, very helpful. And I encourage you all, you know, whether you write, whether you dance, whether you uh, work with clay, whether you paint, you know, whatever it is that speaks to your heart, I do think that art and being creative is a really therapeutic um, tool to deal with trauma. So for me, you know, poetry and music has been a saving grace, you know, just to articulate and locate um, what has, it's what I've experienced and be able to say it out loud. Um, the other thing that helps with, with um, processing trauma is being of service. So like uh, after my father passed, um, I also was very close with a bro my brother who I met later in life and he also passed. So after those back-to-back -back losses, um, I went and, and received some grievance um, counseling. And one of the things that I was um, suggested, that they suggested, was to volunteer my time to others who are in even worse situations. And that really was very helpful. So I started volunteering at the Children's Hospital, um, going and playing with the kids, you know, who were, who were these beautiful little kids who were struggling with diseases. And it, it, it put things in perspective. You know, so even though I was still very much in my, um, in my grief, I was able to be thankful that I was healthy, thankful that I lived, you know, to be an adult. And here's like a five-year-old I'm playing Uno with who isn't going to make it to her sixth birthday. It changes how you view things. So I would say being of service is also an important tool in, in, in dealing with trauma. Okay. We do have a question. Um, I, I don't know if you saw it, but it was from Jorge Luna, and it says, how has COVID changed your work? And then it says, how has technology been a blessing and maybe a barrier to experiencing art like poetry reading slash performance? Okay, sorry. Let's do that one at a time. Okay. So the, okay. So the first piece is, is how has COVID changed my... Yes. Your work. Uh Welcome, you are part of that answer, <laughs> right, right now. This is how COVID has changed, has changed things. Um, I, I do teach an online uh, class and I was doing that before COVID, but I never did online performances. So this is a new thing for everybody. So this is definitely a big change is performing um, without having you know, people there. You know, I'm just here in my kitchen right now. So it's very interesting to be performing like in my own personal theater uh, with my little dog running around. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> my, my little dog is looking at me like, why are you reading poems in the kitchen? So it's definitely, um, it's definitely a big change in, in terms of everything just being you know, on, on Zoom and, and that's just what it is. But, you know, God willing, God willing, it will be temporary. 
And then the second part says, how has technology been a blessing and maybe a barrier to experiencing art like poetry reading slash performance? Yeah, so technology, I think it is kind of a blessing and it is kind of a curse because uh, obviously it makes people be able to connect, you know, like much faster. Uh, social media gives you access to people and you can you know, stay in touch with folks and get news a lot quicker. And so I think that technology has been really, it's an important tool. But at the same time, it does change. There's less in-person interaction. Even when you go out to lunch or something, you see like people are sitting across the table from each other on their phones, you know, not talking to each other. Um, I think like the ancestors would just think we had completely lost our minds. You know, if they could see us, they would be like, why are you not even interacting with your own friends and family? You're too busy like looking at this little random screen uh, that's as if it's powerful. You know, I do think we give technology too much power and too much attention in our lives. Um, yeah, but then at the same time, you know, it is a way to, to share music and share poetry. Uh, so I think it's kind of, it's a good and it's a bad thing. We just have to have the self-control and the discipline to leave it alone sometimes and go out for a nature walk, go out for a hike, you know, spend some time away, away from it. Okay, someone said, surprising to hear you do not consider yourself a singer. No, I do consider myself a singer. Thank you. Um, but I just mean like poetry is what is what took off, you know, poetry is what ended up becoming the, the center um, of my work. But yeah, no, I do consider myself a singer, a vocalist for sure. Um, I've been singing my whole life, really since before I could talk. When I was like two years old, three years old, I used to sing in the mirror with a hairbrush, pretend that I was Whitney Houston, honey. You couldn't tell me I wasn't going to be Whitney Houston when I grew up. So I've definitely been singing my whole, whole life. How do you know when a piece is truly finished? That's a good question. I feel like I know when a piece is finished. Um, how, can I, how can I put it? I'll say this. I know when it's not finished. I know when it's not finished because I'll feel kind of, I'll read it and I'll be like, yeah, it's missing something. It's, you know what it's like? It's like cooking. Now you're cooking and you'll taste it and be like, no, I need a little bit more salt. You know, cook, then you taste it, you go, ah, a little more pepper in here. Oh, you know, it's kind of like that. It's like, as I'm finishing the poem, I'll be like, something's missing. Oh, wait, 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 maybe let, let me add this line here. So it's kind of like that, where, where I can kind of tell when it's not done because it doesn't feel settled. And then at a certain point, I read it over and I'm like, boom, it's done. There it is. I don't have anything left to add. No more spice is needed. So I would say it's kind of a it's kind of a, a process that it lets me know. It lets me know when it's done. So we would like to thank everybody for attending. Unfortunately, time is coming close to its end. So thank you all for all your questions. But guess what? This is not it. Gina is going to do another uh, workshop and I'm going to let Annabelle, um, I want to give clap to <laughs> Annabelle. <laughs> because this is really our true first event so we're all like trying to learn like you say you know from your kitchen and figuring out and Annabelle really put all this together we put oh, it together so nice. thank yeah. you guys. So, uh, I want to give her kudos uh, <laughs> thank you everybody for attending and I'm going to let um, uh, Annabelle give the next uh, event Gina thank you for that incredible and entertaining performance Oh, it's wanted, my pleasure. I wanted to take this time to remind everybody about the workshop that you're going to be doing on September 23rd at 2 p.m. So you guys be sure to look out for your, on your email so that you could register and attend that because that's going to blow your mind. If this blew your mind, that one's just going to let you get in sync with your creativeness and it's just going to be a blast. Mm -hmm. And so be sure to register and thank you everybody for attending and have an amazing rest of your night. Hey, Annabelle, can I ask one question before everybody jumps off? Oh, yeah, of course. Would it be possible to take um, take a screenshot? Like, can, if you can put, I don't know how you do it, but where you put all the, all the pictures up, like, so the screen is full, mm -hmm. and then take a screenshot just so that we have, like, a memory of the, of the event. Yeah. Yeah.
to all attendees. Um, or more. No, so you have a Yeah. I'm wondering if it'll. Yeah. I, um, we're more. Really? Sorry, we're trying to get it to where we could see all the everyone's names and stuff on the screen. Oh, okay. There you go. Like, okay. Let me see. Do you know how to do a screenshot on the. Oh, it's right here. Can I? Okay, I think I got it. And for, and for those whose questions didn't get answered, because I saw, I see there's a few others that were in the QA, please hold on to your questions and tune in when we do the workshop. And I, I definitely want to be able to answer, answer your questions and respond to you. Um, so please participate in the, in the workshop and that way we can continue the conversation. Okay, ready? Do you get, did I have some extra on the camera? So we can get in the picture. If you guys don't mind, can you turn on your cameras just so we can get a picture with everybody virtually? <laughs> if you don't want to, it's okay. We'll take you. How do you do that from this end? Um, there should be a button on the bottom that should say like start video and like the little webcam. Picture. Oh, you need to allow it. Oh, I need to allow it? Yes, I don't think you. we are allowed to. Oh. Yeah, I don't see it. Okay. You've allowed audio. I don't see anything on video. Oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. It's our first time doing this. I have no idea what, what we have access to or not. So, okay, well, we'll just get a picture with all your names if that's okay. Okay. Well, there's silly faces for everyone. <laughs> okay. I believe I got it. <laughs> sorry, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. All the, yeah. thank you all for up, at the top, up at the top where it says Zoom, if you click on the Zoom, then you can, it'll allow you to be able to add the video. Like when you click and it says Zoom up there at the top, if you click the middle or the, the more, I'm sorry, the more down at the bottom. Right, but, uh, from your end though, because you have to do it because you're the uh, host. Oh, mm -hmm. gotcha. Mm -hmm. Once you allow that in, then we'll be able to do it, or or you can just take a picture of the names. Yeah, we do. Actually, okay. I think once I promote you to panelist, okay. I can let you. Mm -hmm. I just I think I gave you access, Julia. Do you mind seeing? There it, it is. Okay. Um, yes. Now we. I think we do. Yes, there is. Okay. Do it. Uh, yeah. 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 Yes. Yay! 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now I can see all of your beautiful faces. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of you. Don't be shy, guys. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm going one by one, but I'll be right. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Yeah, thanks for your patience. <laughs> Y'all are awesome. Everybody's smiling. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you register for the next one. Oh, it's so nice seeing everybody's faces. <laughs> okay, we're going to try this again. <laughs> okay, I believe I got everyone. Okay, y'all ready? We're going to count to three. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, <laughs> let me go make sure I got it. Oh, perfect. It worked. Got it? Yes. Okay, amazing. So <laughs> you can come here and give to me, please. Have a great. good evening, everybody. Thank Bye, you all so everybody. much. Thank you, Gina. Appreciate you. See you it's in a few weeks. It's my pleasure. Take care. Have a good Bye. night, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.